from crazy dinosaurs to a wild sci-fi setting starring Adam Driver. 65 seemed like it had everything to be a massive hit, and yet it ended up being the worst Adam Driver movie ever. Now, the movie is about one man's intergalactic mission to save his daughter from a devastating illness. Even though fans were super excited for this movie to come out, it disappointed everyone. Yep, the highly anticipated sci-fi thriller ended up opening with an abysmal Rotten Tomato score. And this is the lowest score of any of Adam Driver's work has ever gotten. You think you found some better opposite guy than me, and in a few years, you rebel against him because you need to have your voice. You see, the versatile dramatic actor actually made his return to the intergalactic action genre after a long time. The last time you may have seen him in something like this was in Disney's Star Wars sequel trilogy. I feel like he's the father you never had. He would have disappointed you. Get out of my head. Anyway, this time around, Driver's playing the role of Commander Mills. Now, Mills is basically in charge of piloting and overseeing this multi-year exploration mission, and for good reason too. Apparently, it pays some serious kind of money. And the reason why Mills is interested is that he needs the cash for his daughter. Yep, the same daughter who is sick with a terminal illness. That said, things go sideways when an asteroid belt leads his ship to crash land on an unknown planet. Except there's a twist. You see, it crashes on Earth 65 million years ago. So now Mills has to protect himself from some strange prehistoric predators. But that's not all. There's another survivor of the crash who Mills has to protect, and that survivor is a young girl named Koa. Look at me. Look at me. Okay, not gonna lie, but this already seems really interesting. Except this intriguing premise was still not enough to save 65. Yep, the movie ended up being a severe disappointment. Sorry, Adam. I can't control it. It's not my movie that I'm directing, and acting is so much a service industry, so you, you go in and you do as much as you possibly can. But there's something else that makes this disappointment worse, and it's the fact that this movie was made by some pretty big names. For starters, you've got the genre auteur Sam Raimi serving as the producer while Scott Beck and Brian Woods were the directors. We felt like it'd be an extraordinary opportunity to be able to transport audiences back exactly 65 million years ago to see. Now, if you don't recall, that's basically the same duo from A Quiet Place. And if this wasn't impressive already, wait till you hear the rest of the cast. You've got a small but very strong cast of women. This includes Ariana Greenblatt and Chloe Coleman. Despite all of this, 65 still ended up failing. Personally, I'm shocked and disappointed. The Rotten Tomatoes score was 35% at the time of this video, and that's definitely Driver's worst yet. This score is despite the fantastic performance by Adam Driver. You see, Mills was an emotionally engaging and physically demanding character. The rating ended up destroying a filmography that's full of critically acclaimed dramas and blockbusters. There is one silver lining, though. Yep, there may be a million things wrong with 65, but at least Adam Driver's acting isn't one of them. Sure, not all of his movies have gotten high ratings ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. Still, this breaks all records of bad. <laughs> <laughs> now, the veteran actor has worked with a large variety of people before including budding visionaries like Noah Baumbach in Marriage Story. Every day I wake up and I hope you're dead. Dead like it. If I can guarantee Henry would be okay, I'd hope you'd get an illness. Plus, he also worked with Ridley Scott in The Last Duel. But because of how polarizing a lot of his work has been, well, not all of his movies got high scores. For example, let's take the franchise giant Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Now, this only had about 52% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. And then Jim Jarmusch, the horror comedy The Dead Don't Die, also didn't fare much better. This one even had Bill Murray in it, and the rating was still an abysmal 55%. Not much better, I guess. But his second lowest score was also not as bad at 65. Yep, the adaptation of This Is Where I Leave You only got a 44% rating. This is despite the fact that it was incredibly popular on streaming. Shocking. Boner is a man of God now. I'll never stop being weird. I see mom's new tits are present on account of her. On the other hand, he's done exceptionally well in a lot of movies. You see, Driver happens to shine the brightest in indie movies, Oscar nominees, and offbeat comedies. I'm talking about movies like Black Klansman. Now, this one even got him a nomination for Best Supporting Actor. On the other hand, Patterson got a rating of 96%. In fact, Marriage Story got a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. And of course, Driver also got a nomination for Best Actor in this film. I guess you could say that 60 
65 is really not much like anything he's ever done before. Maybe this is why it appears to be such a glaring spot on his prestigious filmography. I mean, the movie turned out to be such a mixture of genres, and it never really takes off until the very end. I do think it represents a mid-budget action thriller, but that's exactly what ends up highlighting just how versatile an actor-driver is, you know. So, what was wrong with the movie 65? Well, I think it tried to do far too many things at the same time. I've already told you about its unconventional premise, right? So, basically, it got a bit too ambitious. The movie doesn't really succeed with any of the things it's trying to pull off. There's a lot of sci-fi stuff happening, and at the same time, they're trying to incorporate some dinosaurs. I do think that individually, all the pieces they were trying to put together have a lot of potential. So, even though it makes sense on paper, it still turned out to be a risk for Driver. It definitely highlights his skills as a versatile actor, like he's taking risks to broaden his range and grow as a performer. And it also shows that he's capable of making a space movie that doesn't have the words wars in the title. In fact, Driver also got to make use of his real-life military training. But at the end of the day, the truth is that all the great ideas in 65 were far too underdeveloped and came together just a little too late. I'm not alone in thinking this either, folks. In fact, film critic David Fear thinks it's not nearly good enough to be taken seriously. In his review for Rolling Stone, he claimed that it's not schlocky enough to be so bad that it's good, but at the same time, it's not good enough to be taken seriously at all. Meanwhile, Richard Roper also had his opinions. He had a slightly more positive outlook, actually. According to him, the movie wasn't compelling enough to make for silly popcorn entertainment. That said, it wasn't so terrible that you'd call it a disaster. There's some pretty intense stuff happening. I mean, there's a meteor plummeting toward the Earth, and then there's the constant threat of dinosaurs. But despite all this, the stakes just don't feel high enough. I do give some credit to 65, though. After all, it broke a Jurassic Park movie trend with scarier dinosaurs, but it still didn't use any background music to amplify the action sequences, so they kind of lay a little flat. Plus, none of the central characters developed all that well, at least not beyond cookie-cutter archetypes. I mean, what a shame, truly, because I genuinely think that the plot alone is pretty interesting, and if it weren't for the bad reviews, anyone would be tempted to buy the ticket to watch this movie. I guess it's not too late for Adam Driver, though. I mean, he could probably still redeem himself with the movies on his slate for the rest of 2023. For instance, later this year, he's playing Enzo Ferrari in the Ferrari biopic. I think that one's definitely going to be a hit. It'll have both dramatic storytelling and high-speed automotive races. Besides, other similar movies like Ford vs. Ferrari were massive hits. After that, we expect to see Driver in Megalopolis. This movie has been in the making for a decade, so it's already fairly hyped up. So, he's sorted. On that note, these were the reasons why 65 was the worst Adam Driver movie ever.